So I want to talk about really quick how um, to stop procrastinating. How many of you guys feel like you deal with that? You feel like you deal with procrastination. How many of you guys feel like um, you have projects and you know you should be getting them done, but you're not doing it? And I felt like, so the reason why I decided to do this live now is because I'm procrastinating currently. Okay. There are two main projects that I need to have done. I should have had done by Monday, like the Monday this this just passed and it's now Wednesday and I haven't done it. And honestly, to, so I'm going to walk you through the, the processes that my, that I go through um, to try to help cut the procrastination. So firstly, we procrastinate usually on tasks that we don't want to do. And the first thing you want to figure out, well, first thing you want to recognize that you're doing it. So for me, the way that I am able to define my procrastinating is if I write the same thing down on my to-do list several days in a row. So that either means one, I've just been so busy, I couldn't get to it. And you'll know if you're that busy. Or two, you don't want to do it. And that's why you still are writing it down every day. And so and I, I, every, I'm doing my, my journal now, my journaling here. And so I was, on this journal that I got, for example, it says like my top goals for the week. So I'll put like for the day. So it'll say like, um, what are the top five things that would make the most impact on my day and on my life? And I put those there first. And I usually start with those in the beginning of the day because they make the most difference. We can get caught up in a lot of small clerical nothing tasks and say, well, I was busy, but were you productive? And so if I write the same thing down consistently, for like several days in a row or several weeks in a row, it's like, okay, the first step is realizing that you're doing it, right? So look at your to-do list and see if you have the same thing on there consistently. You're not doing it because let's say, you can't say it's time because there are other things that you put on that list that you got done, right? And if it was something like something fun, you would have did it already. So it's not time, it's never time. Know that it's never time. So first step is, okay, am I writing it down over and over again? That I noticed that today. So as you keep writing this down, Okay, the second thing you do is, why do I not want to do this? That's the next question. So first you realize that I'm writing this down over and over again. It's not getting done. Okay, boom, I'm procrastinating on this task. Got it? That's the first step. Second step is why. Then you sit down and you ask yourself, be honest with yourself and say, Vanessa or Tamika or Jaquetta or anyone else. And you say, why do I not want to do this? Right? And it can be a number of reasons. Like think about when you walk past the kitchen sink and it's dishes in there. Why don't you want to do it? Because I don't feel like it. It'll take a long time. The dishes are probably gross. And, you know, I don't want to do it. And it may be like you feel like it takes a long time to do it. Right. So but you want to get the reason. So like one of the things I do is like a project that I have to write. And I'm procrastinating on it because I don't want to do it because I feel like it might take some time and I got to turn my brain like really on to create the content for this project. So it's like a mental project that I have to really think and create. And one thing that one of my coaches would help me walk through is you ask yourself, you know, when you procrastinate, when you don't want to do a task, usually it's the same kind of task that you procrastinate on and you need to figure out what thought patterns or emotions do you associate with that task? And so I find that a lot of times when it's like hard mental projects, I'll procrastinate on them, you know, like creating, you know, writing grants. Anything that's like a really like I have to I can't just like so you know how you have tasks that you can like emails. I don't have to think with emails. It's easy. I know I already know the information. Right. But when you're like writing a book or if you're writing fresh content or you're creating fresh something new it's a more mental project and so those are the ones that i feel like i procrastinate on and so then i said then you break it down and say why then i said that's the next step okay so we procrastinate on the ones you have to really think about why because it's the, like it's it's hard to do so i procrastinate because it's hard and i feel like it takes too much time right so you get you figure out the task that you admit figure out that you're procrastinating then you go to the why why I'm procrastinating. And then you put, you deal with those reasons and then you put in steps that can kind of go with those reasons to fix it or you delegate. So whenever I see something getting written down over and over again, I'll either go through that first process where I try to break down why I'm not doing it 
or two, I delegated out. And that delegation could be something that a friend of mine can do it or whatever the case is, but sometimes it might cost me. So let's say it's something that I don't feel like doing. Let's say, for example, you're not cleaning your house consistently, right? You're procrastinating on it because you don't want to do it. And you already went through all your mental emotions about it and you just cannot get past it. Then you delegate it. But because you cannot get past that mental piece where you can change your thought process on it, it's costing you money and you hire a housekeeper, right? But the bottom line is the task got done. You So it's like you either delegate it, which can cost you money, or you break down the thought process to reverse it. Now, either one is perfectly fine. You know, every, sometimes you can't, you know, you have to look at what's going to help your bottom line quicker, you know? And so some things it's just like, I'm just going to have to bite the bullet on this and just pay somebody to do it because I am not, I'm just not going to do it. So you bite the bullet, you pay someone to do it, right? So you either delegate it out if you're procrastinating on it, for example, like building your website. I know that's something that I know how to do, but it's mentally taxing when I want to build a really complex website. And so a lot of times I'll just outsource it and just pay someone versus procrastinating on it. And, you know, I was like, okay, it's going to cost me at the end of the day, but the task still got done. You follow me? So you either pay with your money or you pay with, you know, digging in your brain and figuring out why you don't want to do it. Okay. So I go those ways. Then I put some things in place. So let's say I'm not paying someone to do it. I'm going to do it. So after I figure out why I don't want to do it, I, there's a couple of different things that I can do to put my, to make, to change my mindset about the task to get it done. Okay. So I'm gonna give you a couple of things that I do, which I'm going to implement tonight because I realized it took me like three to four. Well, it took me, it was due Monday. Tuesday, I realized I was procrastinating on it. And today's Wednesday. So it took me two extra days to decide to actually take action and say, okay, Vanessa, what you going to do? Because we're not taking this the rest of the week. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? So these are things that for, I'm going to list them all out. And I'm going to pick a couple to do because these are larger projects. So um, it may take me time, but I know it's not going to take me as long as I think it is. It never takes that long. So the first thing that I do is I issue a reward. So I will say, okay. When I get this done, I get this, okay? And it has to be something that you actually want. You know, that's one thing that I realized. If you just say, okay, I get ice cream and you really don't want ice cream, it's not going to motivate you. It has to be something that if you got it, you know, you'll be super happy about it because it has to propel you to move past the negative emotions you have with the task to say, okay, I'm going to do it anyway. Right. And so you want to get to, you want to figure out. So usually I have like a list of rewards that I give myself. That's like, okay, I'll pick this. I'll pick that. Um, with my larger projects, it's usually traveling. So if it's something like this really big, I'll say, okay, I get this done. I can take a trip here. As soon as it's done, I'm booking my flight and I'm gone, right? That kind of stuff motivates me. And it's like, okay, I get to get on a plane. I get to go where I want to go. In like a couple hours, as soon as I finish this project, say less, right? And so it'll make me get it done. It puts it kind of like overshadows that thought. And maybe it's not traveling for you. Maybe it's I'll get to go to a restaurant. And that's why you do a lot in the beginning. You say, okay, I want to go to the movies or I want to go to a restaurant or I want to go shopping. That's what doesn't really work for me anymore. You got to figure out where you are. Shopping doesn't really do it for me. Just as it doesn't. <laughs> but traveling does. You know, putting something in place where I can go travel that's it. Or like a suit, an experience I haven't had before. Like before I used to put experiences, like I would say, okay, if I get this done, I can go to the escape room, you know, or I can go do something else fun. You know, I would put that on, which those still things still work, but the, my, and you have to, it, it's going to change over time. So like where in my area, like my surrounding cities, if you're in Virginia in like central Richmond area, I've done mostly everything. I guarantee if you list something in the chat i've done it or i've been there um, i haven't been to every single restaurant there's a lot of restaurants but i've been to most types of restaurants i've done most of the activities that i know of been to every single museum <laughs> so uh, it's a few things i haven't done but it's very few like skydiving but see skydiving wouldn't motivate me because skydiving is not something that i'm looking forward to it's like a face your fear type thing. So I wouldn't use that as a reward. You also don't want to use punishment. So you don't want to say, okay, do this, or you got to, I used to do that too. And I had to learn from my coach. I would say, do this, or you got to do a hundred pushups, or you got to go to the gym. Right. <laughs> but um, what I found was that 
he explained to me was if you associate work with a punishment, you'll start to put it in a negative space in your mind. So you want to start associating work with pleasure. And so that's why I switched it up. And I think it does work better to be rewarded with something versus, and that shows scientific across the board that it does work a lot better. So, um, so first thing I would do is I would give myself a reward. So like get this project done, you get to go here, right? So that's the first thing I would say. Um, the second thing I would do is I would implement Parkinson's law. So Parkinson's law basically says work fills the, the time allotted for it. That's what it's all the time. So basically, a lot of times we, when we procrastinate, we think that the project is going to take forever. We feel like if I start, it's going to take me so many hours or several days. And how many times have you actually started doing it? And it was like 10 minutes. Like when you were like, oh my God, I have to wash these dishes. It's going to take me forever. And you start washing dishes and you're done in like 10 minutes right in your mind you gonna take this whole long process and so one thing that i do is i will um set a timer so i'll say so you can do a timer in one of two ways so i'll either set a timer and say okay vanessa you got to get this and this really works well with the reward part so you have 15 minutes or 20 minutes to finish this project or however long i think it's going to take but i shorten it and i'll set the timer as soon as you're done you get your reward right so the timer helps me condense that time the second way you can do it is you can say, okay, I don't want to do this task, but I'm only going to spend 10 minutes on it. So I'm going to focus on it for 10 minutes. And once it's done, I'm free for the rest of the day. What that does is it's making you commit to at least doing something, right? So I, I'm, I have 24 hours this whole day. I'm procrastinating on this thing. I'm just going to spend 10 minutes on it. That's it. And then I'm going to give myself space and be okay. I'm not going to feel guilty. I'm going to release myself from this project because I gave, I'm only giving it 10 minutes. And that's a lot of times what happens. And if you just say, okay, I'm going to go hard for 10 minutes, that's it. And then I won't feel guilty about not working on it again for the rest of the night. Tomorrow, I'll do another 10 minutes, right? Or what will happen is you'll get into it in that first 10 minutes and you'll start getting into the rhythm. When the timer goes off, you're like, hey, I'm going to do another 10 minutes, right? That sometimes will happen too. And so... Um, I use a timer in one of those two ways. Usually it's the the first one where I set a timer to complete it and then get to go on my on my um, reward for that. Okay, so the first one was setting a reward for yourself. Second thing is using time to your advantage. So setting those timers to help you, you know, get it done. Um, another thing that I do when I'm procrastinating is a lot, of, a lot of times, so we are very much... Um, environmental creatures and so how many times have you not felt like doing something but you put yourself in that environment and you do it so like uh, if you join like a workout group and they're all like oh my gosh we're all together now you're motivated you're running two three miles if you were by yourself you would do one and they actually they see that a lot when you do group exercises you usually go harder because you're you match with everybody else in the group versus if you go by yourself that's why you can train with a personal trainer and it'll be more intense not just with, Yes, they have more scientific knowledge about what you need to do, but because they're pushing it and doing it with you, right? And so a lot of times when I don't want to get work done, I need to move my environment to be in a place where people are working. So whether that's the library, um, college campuses, co-working spaces, DC is really close to me. Um, if you guys know DC is in your close here, I've been known to just drive to DC just to get that energy because everyone's working. You know, it's a really... It's a place where it's like really hustle and bustle business, but you know, people are moving or Atlanta. I'll go to Atlanta too, just to get that vibe. Like, okay, we're grinding. It's grind time. And the energy was so like, okay, let me switch up my environment. And that will help me execute on this task. So going back, give yourself a reward, use the time, the, the alarm clocks and use time to your advantage. The other thing that I do is I switch up my environment. And so I'll put myself somewhere where I am motivated or whatever it is I need to do. You know what I mean? You follow me? Does that make sense? What else do I do? So that's the, that's the main things I'm going to do for this one. You can also, so sometimes what I'll do too is I'll do, get like an accountability group. So let's say I have a lot of work to get done. It's kind of goes with environment. I'll pick like two or three people or one to three people that are like hustlers or like that are all other that are business owners and i'll say yo let's do like i yo i'll say let's do a, a i call it going into the lab and i'll say let's go into the lab together and basically what that means is like whether i get an airbnb or they come to my house or i go to their house or we go to the office and we once again get that environment going where it's like okay we about to grind it out like we all in here for the next 
10, 12 hours. Sometimes, most people have done that a day, the whole day, all we're doing is working. That's it, production, production, production. And it's like, that is something, it, I don't know why, but it works. It works when you have someone else doing it with you. And so uh, a lot of times I'll do that. So I'll get like another person and say, hey, let's lock in and we'll both go over what each of us needs to do, like our to do's and I, and then what happens is like that personal trainer is like, get your list done. You get your list done, I bet. And like, we're just like, <laughs> like doing it. And so I'll do that too. I'll get someone else to come on board with me and say, okay, I gotta get this done. I'm procrastinating. I don't want to do it. Listen, help me, right? <laughs> so I'll do that as well to assist. What else is there that you can do? That might be it. As well as the ones I pretty much will use. I will use those. So I'll put an incentive. I change my environment. I manipulate time, break down. And if worst comes to worst, if you just can't cannot get it done, then you delegate. It's like, okay, I'm just not going to do it. So because I, I tried all those things, I'm still not getting it done. Now it's going to cost me my money. So now I'm going to pay someone to get it done because I'm not doing it. Um, and like I said, you don't have to do that last. You can do that first. If it's something that you said, you know what? I'm just not doing it. It's just not happening. Like there's some things in my life that's like, I'm just not doing it. I don't care. It's not, look at my face. It's not happening. Like washing my dog. Love her. Love her. I think I might do it in the summertime. Like we get like a fun activity. The so Cause she's crazy. <laughs> she's not crazy. She's just really big. I love Rottweiler and she's huge. And she's like, it was cute when she was a small puppy, but now you're just really extra. Plus she sheds, so you're not getting in my tub. So I have to do it outside, but she's just so extra. I feel like if I do what I do, it, it'll be like a fun thing. Like, hey kids, let's go outside and wash the dog. Outside of that, she's going to the groomers. Okay, <laughs> but because I don't, and I know I'm not gonna do it, right? I could, I'm very well capable of giving her a bath, right? But I, if it was up to me, I procrastinate on it. And so because I don't want to do it and I know I would procrastinate on it, it's going to cost me money. I'm just going to take her to the groomer and they get her, they give her her bath. So you follow me? Does that make sense? So and then, and then would, I, what I would want you guys to do is just write down. Don't I usually write like these huge long to-do lists. Like I do brain dumps all the time. And a brain dump for me is just where I put everything out of my head onto paper. Like what do what am I what do I need to get done? And I put it on paper. And honestly, it's it's so good to do because as I go back over the years, I see a lot of things that are still there. Some things come off, but there's some things that stay there. And it helps me see like, okay, what was really important to me, what am I procrastinating on, things like that. But even on a shorter scale. Um, you can brain dump it on paper. And then one thing I've been doing too, because a lot of times we'll pick the easy stuff. I pick the things that will make the biggest difference in my life if I did it. And those are usually the ones you procrastinate on. Okay. <laughs> so you pick those and then you start working through your feelings. You start working through your feelings and say, okay, like, for example, I have a presentation I have to do on Friday and I have not done created the content for the presentation that I need to give. It's like a speech I have to do. And I've been procrastinating on it. And it's not that the thing is, guys, it's not even hard. I don't even know why I'm not doing it. You know what I mean? But it's like that's on my list. So that's one of the three things I like finished presentation. Right. So they'll have three things that I need to get done. It's going to make the biggest difference for me right now. I need to put, go in the gym, too. But, you know, there's that. You know, and then it's also one thing that I realized and, you know, I was talking to someone recently about this. We so once you understand paradigms and like why you do what you do and what really is priority to you, you can start to accept who you are. You can change who you are. But a lot of us are living in denial from who we are. So, for example, me going to the gym, you see my face go to the gym. Right. That's my current mindset, my current paradigm, my current thought process. I used to go to the gym a lot. And so we are all typically like result driven. So I don't know if you, if you were following me in like 2019, was it 2023, 2020, 2019, 2020, I was going to the gym heavily. Like I started, but I had a why I had a why. Okay. I watched, I forgot how I found, I think I read like a Whoopi's world record or something like that. And I, I saw the fastest woman and she was, I think, what's the fastest mile for women? It was like four minutes or something that she ran. And I was like, I could do that. 
right? And my plan was when I saw it, I said, I want to do that. I want to do four minutes and I want to go to the Olympics. Like I was inspired. It was just like something that I felt really passionate about. And I don't know why, but I really wanted to do it. And so when I first got on my treadmill and I ran, honey, my time was 17 minutes for that mile, okay? 17 minutes. And I was like, that's cool. Guys, I got my mile down to seven minutes within about a month, like a month, a month and a half maybe. I got it down to seven minutes, right? And that was what I was running every day. So if I, didn't, I ran every single day. Every single day I ran. And I, two, three days out of the week, I would do the pool. And then I just, I had a whole workout routine that I did, which, uh, which I did consistently. I did it every day. And so I was able to get my mile down to seven minutes. And so I was like, okay, cool. And I did a lot of, I did a lot of research on like meditations that you can do while you're running, where you separate your mind from your body. And it was so dope how, oh my gosh, it was amazing to learn where in order for you to reach those intense physical limits, you have to take your mind from your body and you have to like mentally, it's like your mind is above your body and you're telling your body you keep going and you don't feel the pain because your body is separate. It's, it, I was able to do it. It was so cool. It's like you can feel it, but it's not you and you control your body and you keep making it go. You make you go. You don't stop going, period, because I said so. Right. And so I did a lot of research on that. I did the meditations. And so I got my, my time on seven minutes. And so I said, OK, I'm almost there. And about doing the science behind it, I said, OK. In about um, three more weeks, I should be at about four minutes. Because what I was doing was every time I ran, I forced myself to get uh, 20, 10 to 20 seconds less. And so I would look at my run and I would see where I slowed down. I would track it and I say, okay, you're slowing down around this point. When you hit that four minute mark, you're not allowed to slow down. Push through that. Push through about 30 seconds and then keep the same momentum going forward and you'll hit the next 20 seconds. And so I was breaking it down like, like that so I could make sure I was hitting it. Right. So this is me working out every single day that I want to go to the Olympics. Right. Rock with me. And so when I started getting closer and I said, OK, I'll be ready. I'll have my four minute mark, close to four minute mark in about a month. So at, at one one day, I started doing the research and I said, OK, well, how do I apply to go to the Olympics? Right. And I'm looking online. I'm looking at the applications. Y'all. Did y'all know you need money to go to the Olympics? I mean, money, money. OK, you had to get sponsored. You got to go to these. You got to get an Olympic coach to sponsor you. You need all this money. And after doing all the research behind it, I was like, because I just thought all I had to do was say I can run. Watch me run for a minute. That's what I thought was in my mind. Right. And so when I saw that I had to do all this other stuff, it kind of deflated my bubble. And it was just like, oh, I don't want to do that anymore. I just wanted to get the four minutes and say, hey, I can run four minutes. Can I run this Olympics? That's what I wanted to do. And so once the me, the, the vision that I set, which I could have kept going. It's okay. Well, now I got to go. I didn't want to fundraise. I just wanted to get my body down to four minutes. So <laughs> I said, I can go fundraise, find a coach, make it a whole, sh you know, shenanigan. But I didn't want to do that. So as soon as I decided I was no longer going to the Olympics, I didn't want to do that anymore. My drive to hit the four minutes went away. Gradually, I stopped going to the gym. I said it to say, I stopped going as consistent. I said it to say, we do what we are passionate about and what we have a why for. And it, it's that that gets most of our time, right? So now when I'm saying, oh, I love the gym, I don't have a why to go to the gym, a why that's big enough. Like we all know we should exercise. We all know we should be healthy. We know if we're overweight. We know what that means, right? We know that your life expectancy is usually shorter if you're not in shape, right? But that's not usually a strong enough why to make people do something. That's why it usually takes someone getting like a bad medical uh, diagnosis for them to change their health. Even though they knew the whole is it doesn't take we all know we didn't eat fruits and vegetables and drink water. Right. It didn't take that. Like we know what to eat when you get something like we go to the doctor and they say, oh, you have diabetes. You have high blood pressure. It's not that you didn't know what to eat is that you chose not to and you didn't waste the value in doing something, eating that way. You didn't see the value in it. But once your doctor said, hey, if you keep eating like this, you're going to die. You saw the value in living. Death became real to you. And you said, oh my gosh, I want to live. All right, what I got to do? Right? Because <laughs> now it's in the forefront and now it's priority. And so I said to say, what we do, everything you do every day is based off your, your current 
why your current motivation and it's not a lot of the times guys it's not what's on our vision board it's not what we say you know the reality is if you want if you truly down inside of you wanted what you said you could get it easily you could get it but we don't it's not this true deep passionate thing it's not something that we really want what we really want is what we do every day what you actually do every day is what you really want you know and you know and that that's why we have to put that work into one I think everyone should journal. I don't I don't know if people say, you know, maybe a girl thing. I think everyone should journal because it helps you unpack your thoughts and what gets measured gets managed. Uh, it helps you kind of see your cycles, you know, see what you're doing. You know, a lot of you may not know that you're failing yourself. You may not know that you're not completing your task unless you say, oh, I keep writing this. Down. I'm not getting this done. You know what I mean? Like, and then and then it causes you to look at yourself. You know, I know for me, I wrote down a couple times last week, I was going to the gym. Didn't go once. Didn't go once. Okay. But I had to own that. You know what I mean? I had to own that. So, okay, Vanessa, I know right now, hey, Vanessa, it's not a priority to you. Why? You know, why is that a priority to you? So now, right now, I'm like working on my paradigm. Like, okay, through your thought process. So like something that I would do, you know, like I like being in shape in the summertime. <laughs> why i like to wear cute outfits i like to look cute and you know i like so usually in the summertime i start with the smoothies and the salads in the gym right because that's my why at that point at that point my why is stronger right i want to look cute in these outfits and i can't look cute if i'm not in shape you know what i mean and you have to just own that like you guys really have to pay attention to what you're doing and your paradigms and your why's and you can shift those you can change those first of it's acknowledging what it is so like if you're wanting to build this business because you want to quit your job right but you only spend like an hour a day you don't really want to build this business you don't like your job but you're good there because if you really wanted to quit your job you would have if you really didn't like your job you would have quit it's not you don't like it but you don't hate it it's enough for you to accept it and so since it's enough for you to accept you are okay dealing with it with settling for it you follow me if you truly didn't like it and you truly hated it you would have quit for example if you go into work tomorrow and they tell you something like outrageous like everyone has to work naked or i don't know something like something that is like what is your problem right you would quit because that'd be your limit you'd be like this is no i'm not doing that no and then you'll be forced to either get another job or push yourself into the business which would be either Getting another job, usually if you're not going to push your business, if you quit or you get fired, it's usually because you don't trust yourself to build that business. And it could be fear that's holding you back. It could be, you know, the lack of knowledge, or the lack of execution, fear, but you have to break that stuff down, you know, and every action you take is because of the thoughts that you have. You th you're thinking something and that's why you react that way, whether it's in not doing or in doing. And so look at your to-do list that you that you wrote today, yesterday, this week, and look at the things you actually got done. All of the things you wrote, for the most part, typically can be done, but you chose not to do it. You chose to do other things. And think about the things think about the other things that you did. Look at your schedule from the time that you wake up to the time you go to sleep. That's your priority. That is the life you choose. Okay. Whatever you're doing every day is the life that you're choosing for yourself now you can write goals and you can write visions and, and all that stuff that's all nice and dandy but it's what what that basically does it's it's working on changing your thought process changing your paradigms changing your habits changing your why okay and it's really when it becomes ingrained in you you do it you follow me but yeah, so I feel like when it comes to procrastination, the main thing that you want to do is list those things that you, that you know you're supposed to be doing, that you want to do, list them out, okay? Figure out why you're not doing it, delegate it, or put one of those things in place that I said, you know, to help you get the thing done, right? And a lot of times, like I said, it's you don't want to do it because you have some kind of mental thought around it. So like, I don't want to go to the gym right now because... I'm thinking, I don't feel like it because working out is not fun. It don't, it doesn't feel good. 
Like I'm this is me actually thinking out loud. Like I'm thinking about me getting on the treadmill. There's nothing fun about being on the treadmill. It's not fun. It's tiring. It doesn't feel good. I don't want to get on it. <laughs> okay. So let's say that's your thought process. You can say, okay, well, that's not fun, but dancing is fun. Go do a dance class, right? I could do that, you know? But then I think about, then my next thought is, I could do that. Or I could just work, right? It's like, because it's not a priority. So I have to force myself. And a lot of times when, for me, what I think works really well is I have to change my environment. You know, if you're around a lot of people that are unhealthy and overweight, you're probably going to be unhealthy and overweight too, okay? So, like, you can put something, let's say there's a lot, like, California is actually the healthiest state in America, right? If you were really serious, I'm going to go to California for three months because they're going to inspire me. Or, like, Costa Rica was very, everyone was very healthy there. Oh, my gosh, in shape. Everybody's, oh, my gosh, what is happening here, okay? You can move yourself to areas where, uh, physical health and nutrition is important to them. And then you'll be inspired to do it because everyone's doing it, right? You have, you have to use that concept to your advantage, right? Let's say you really want to, I don't know, be a better mom. Put yourself in, you can go be in mom groups. You can be, I want to be a more successful business owner. Go put in yourself in, in those business spaces, right? You know, so it really is a matter of, and it's funny, I was having a meeting with, a, I'm actually going through Tony Robbins' uh, business mastery uh, training because I invest in coaching and in training, and that's why it's really important to invest in yourself. And I will tell you, Tony Robbins' uh, mastery course is no is no cheap penny. I tell you that. I tell you that. But I need that, you know. And that's the crazy part. Like it's definitely over time. Over time, you start to see the value in coaching and in training and in education. You know, the price tags associated with his program, if he would have told me that five years ago, I would have said, what is wrong with you? That's not happening. In what world? How? What? What? That's like a, that's a whole car. Like, that's a car. That's like me buying a car, okay? Uh, and, and then on top of that, <laughs> yeah, it's five days, okay? You trying to tell me I got to give you car money for five days? If you would have told me that five years ago, it wasn't happening. No, I didn't see the value. Now I do. Now I get it because I know when I, especially, so you look at the coach, look at the, the trainer and look at their results, right? That kind of stuff don't come cheap. <laughs> you know, now you can learn on your own. It just takes longer reading the books, you know, stuff like that. But when you want to shorten that learning curve, you start to see the value in investing in yourself. It's, it's like a whole different mindset shift to hold it. Like a friend of mine right now is in another really popular trainer um, coaching program. And I think she said it was like $50,000 for the coaching. And I was like, what? But it's, it's a lot that goes, but I get, I get it. I get it. She's a successful business owner too. And she's like, I want to go to the next level. He has a coaching program, $50,000. I just signed up. And I was like, okay, bet. That's what's up. So mine is not $50,000, but it's a little less, but it's just like, you know, when, when you really start to understand the value of what you know has taken you this far, you got to know more. You know, if you want to get further, you got to know more, period. It is what it is. Um, but anyway, my point is breaking down those thought patterns. You do what you do because you were taught to do that. And so you have to unteach that to yourself. And I really feel like environment plays a big role. The more I keep saying that, the more I'm like about the book of trip. I think I am. <laughs> I, I just I, I'm, I'm very aware of environment how it plays a role in your life and so if you find it procrastinating you know go to the library go somewhere where people are working you know go somewhere where they're doing the thing you want to do and usually guys when I go to the gym I'm good I'm already there everyone's working out plus you got all the people in the gym who's already like buff and all in shape and you're like oh look at you right and so it's like you're gone I'm gonna get there too right especially when they, they're beside you on the treadmill and they're going like on, on level like eight and you're on three and they've been doing it for like 20 minutes and you just started, you out of breath. It's like, well, look, you there, right? It's the motivation. It's like, well, I'm, I'm going to get this thing. I hope these tips helped you when it comes to building your notary business and just everything in life, you know, helping you not procrastinate and really getting to reach the goals that you set for yourself because you are the reason that your goals are either getting done or you're writing them down every day because you didn't get to it yet, right? And don't say you didn't have enough time because we all have the same 24 hours and look what everyone else is doing. Not everyone, because a lot of people are procrastinating, but look at what the big the people who are really making moves, look at what they're doing. They have the same time that you have, okay?